no fishing boat would be complete if it didn't have a gaff. So we've built this typically following the same method that would have been used by fishermen, which is a stick brass wire and an old shark hook bent and turned into a gaff. I was surprised when Richard told me there were no cleats on the boat. Um, what they were were three loops, um, one in the bow and one on either end of the stern. And what he says is that the ropes, whether it be an anchor rope or one of the ropes from the seine, were looped, passed through this loop and tied onto a seat. You'll recall that we got some glass beads to make up the floats, but they were really too shiny. So I put a little orange on them and made them age them a bit. The last piece of the purse seine was to attach the sinkers or leads to the bottom of the seine. And I was really lucky at a fish shop because this is a standard lead used for um, weighting down a fishing line and they were perfectly in scale. We loaded them onto a line as we had done with the floats and then uh, once completed um, we tied this off to the bottom of the seine which if you remember I had a line strung all along the bottom. So again just going through the process tying knots and holding it in place. Of course, if you're over 40, you can't thread a needle without a magnifying glass. So that was probably the biggest challenge. That and the patience to tie all these knots, um, probably a few hundred knots between the floats and the leads. Uh, to make sure that the knots didn't undo or come off, um, I painted all of them with diluted PVA and then simply cut off the excess and the, the scale really came out quite good, both for the floats and for the leads. Most of the time that you saw the model, um, it was attached to a building board. And of course that would never do for the final product. So I went to visit my friend in Tobago, Richard Hadid and was able to get a wonderful piece of live edge which I used some wipe on poly um, to get the finish and then used the same building, building board uh, as a template and drilled holes and really have a, a wonderful base to display this fantastic model. This morning we're going to start to do that exercise that I've dreaded which is dirtying the model up to try and give it a little character and to make it look used. So we're going to start with the simplest ones which is the three oars and the gap because they're nice and shiny. We're going to follow Tom Laurier's suggestion of using grey to age the wood a little bit, a little bit of black and brown and try and get some character. All of it is acrylics. I'm following his advice, which is to build up a sort of a grey patina um, on the oil itself. And then I, I put it on with a brush and then I rub it off with a piece of cloth. And then I start to streak some brown and some grey. Um, again rubbing it off and if I don't like that I'll come back and streak again a, a little grey. I certainly remember these oars um, <laughs> as a child growing up and none of them would have been nice shiny pieces. And we did the same thing with the gaff. Um, it, it was full of blood and sweat and tears. The anchor is probably the easiest one to do. Um, it's made of brass. So we're going to use this pewter black. The mix is 50-50. 
when I first got Peter Black, it didn't come with instructions, so I put it on full strength and couldn't understand why it really wasn't blackening the, the piece. And it's only on a post somewhere on the Nautical Research um, Guild that I found that you had to dilute it 50% to get it to really work. We just leave that um, to dry and we're going to add a little rust to it when it dries. Now we come on the most heart rendering part of this, which is to start dating the model up. She's so nice and crisp and clean. But the working areas certainly are the bow and around the first two frames. Um, the little ropes here, which are in fact the cleats, where the seam comes across, the boat coming towards the back and certainly the rollock area. These are the most difficult parts to do. We're going to start with the rocks. I don't pretend to be an expert in this process at all. Um, these are all Tom Laurier's techniques, which I have to say, at the end when this thing was completed, really worked quite well. Um, it's a mix of putting a, a very light gray finish, which will cut the sharpness of the paint, and then followed by dry brushing of some brown which gets into various cracks and crevices and really gives you the impression when it's done of a boat that's that's working um, the biggest challenge i had was every now and again i'd put too much on um, but because it's water-based it's very easy to simply wipe wipe it off which is really great using acrylics um, so a piece of cloth handy by is an um, is essential if you want to get a good finish. What made this a lot easier was the quality of model that I'm working with, the paint finishes that came from the airbrush. I think if I hadn't spent a lot of time doing this the correct way and really making it into a, a first class model, um, the aged process um, wouldn't have it wouldn't have come out as nice. So once you get over the <laughs> the aspect of dirtying the model, which for me was really quite a struggle, um, as it starts going over the 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 boat, the boat starts to come alive. I did think long and hard about dirtying up the waterline, the anti-fouling on the bottom. Because if these boats are left in the water, um, they tend to get barnacles and the bottom looks pretty good. But this boat was well maintained and well taken care of. The final piece was just to cut the strings off of the leads. Um, this is the excess. And this was really done quite easily. It's um, finally complete. Um, over 150 hours um, to reach this stage. Um, some of it involved in a rebuild, some of it involved in mistakes, some of it is simply a learning process, and some of it is just hard work and the nature of scratch building. Um, in the process, 
I've actually built four models. Um, this was the first, this was the second, the third is in parts yet to be assembled, and the fourth is this one, and I am going to um, build this one to completion. Um, this is technically will be a hundred percent accurate to the to the build. Um, this ended up at 25 feet when the actual boat is 28 feet long. As with any scratch building project, it's a journey of discovery. And so it's not really until the very end of the completion of this model did I find the last of the secrets that were hidden in Richard's book. And all of those are going to be shown in a last video, which is not going to be available immediately. So I'm not sure when I'm going to get to actually complete this boat. But it'll be a record of all of the things we learned that are hidden or not shown in this book, um, but will be in this final model. I hope you found it interesting, and I hope it will encourage you to do as I have done, um, go and do some research, gather some data, and go and build a fantastic model ship that records some part of our or your history.